Hello and welcome to this video on how to calculate an intra-class correlation coefficient in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials related to multivariate statistical methods, typically structural equation modeling, latent class analysis, multi-level analysis, and similar techniques. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, then please hit the like button. So in this video, I want to show you how you can compute an intra-class correlation coefficient in M+. Why is this something that you might be interested in doing? Oftentimes when we have clustered data or so-called multi-level data where individuals are nested within groups or organizations such as students nested within school classes or employees nested within companies, we are interested in knowing whether there are any dependencies that arise from this clustered or nested structure. In other words, we're interested in knowing whether there's any variance that is due to between group differences rather than individual differences. And so then if that's the case that there are differences between the groups in terms of their means, then we need to take that dependency into account. So for example, if you have... Um, if you have cluster data and you find that your intra-class correlation is um, not zero, then you want to make sure that when you run your regression model or analysis of variance model or structural equation model that you take that dependency into account. Because if you don't, then you can end up with incorrect statistical inference. So for example, your standard errors might be biased, your p-values might be incorrect, you might have an increased type 1 error rate when you conduct tests of statistical significance. And so you want to make sure that you make an adjustment for that in some way, for example, by using multi-level modeling. So calculating the intra-class correlation coefficient is one way, so to say, of diagnosing the extent of dependency that arises from a clustered structure. And then when you find that your intra-class correlation coefficient is not zero, then it means there is some dependency and you have to take that into account. So I want to give you an example here in the M plus software. You can see that here I have a data set where I have a handful of variables, a class variable that indicates the school class here. So this is my cluster variable in this data set that indicates the group structure students nested within school classes. I have a math score variable and I have another test score variable that is called KFT. This is a um, cognitive abilities test score variable. And so with M plus, I can very conveniently estimate the intra-class correlation coefficient for multiple variables at a time by using the so-called two-level basic option here. How does this work? This works in such a way that we specify which variables we are interested in looking at well, for which variables we want to calculate the intra-class correlation. In this case, I picked the math score variable and the KFT score variable, so I um, put them here under use variables. And then also I have to select a cluster variable so that M plus can identify the multi-level structure in the data. So whenever you run some kind of multi-level model in M plus, or if you want to take the multi-level structure into account, then you need a cluster variable that indicates the group. So in this case, it's the school class variable. And then the last thing that we need to do is specify as the analysis type two-level basic. Two-level basic means that we're not running an actual multi-level model, but rather we're only looking at the cluster structure and we're computing the intra-class correlation coefficient to look at the dependency as well as descriptive statistics for each level. So let's take a look at what we get when we run the two-level basic analysis in M+. First, we can see that this analysis was based on 503 individual observations. So there were 503 students in this data set. And then when we scroll down a little bit more, we can see how many clusters we had under summary of data, number of clusters was 34. So the 503 students were nested in 34 classrooms. And one nice feature of this two-level basic analysis is that it also gives you more detailed information on the cluster structure. So you can see here this kind of um, stem and leaf-like plot 
that gives you an idea about the cluster sizes. So for example, here we had one cluster or one school class with size five, meaning five individuals or five students were in this class. And that was the class with the ID number 22. So you could go to your data set now, you could go to the school class variable and then look at number 22. And so you would see that there are five individuals in that class. There were eight individuals in the school class with the number 18. And you can see that there were a bunch of um, classes with more individuals here in the middle between 13 and 18. You can see there were one, two, three, four, five school classes with 13 students, the, num the number 14, the number 2, number 5, number 23, and number 13. And so this gives you a sense for the distribution of the cluster sizes. Obviously, there was variation. Some classes were small, or from some classes, there were only a few students who participated, and then others were fairly large. There was even one where 24 students participated, and that was the class with the number 7. So that gives you a pretty good summary here. And then at the bottom of that, you can also find the average cluster size right here. So about 15 students on average were included in the study for a given class. Of course, there were some were smaller and some were larger as we saw above. And then below that, you already get your intra-class correlations for the selected variables in the use variables list. You can see that the math score variable has an intra-class correlation estimate of 0.44, which is very substantial. So at this point, you would know that yes, it definitely makes sense and is required to use some kind of multi-level modeling technique here to properly account for the dependency in the data, whatever technique that might be. But you need to take this into account because here the intra-class correlation is so substantial, it's so much larger than zero that you can't ignore that dependency in the data. There's a lot of variance between school classes. In other words, the school classes differed strongly in terms of their average math performance. Some school classes showed great performance, others did not. And so ignoring that would mess up your analysis. If you, for example, ran a conventional ordinary least squares regression with this math score variable or an analysis of variance or um, a path model or structure equation model, then that would mess up your results, most likely, because there is a dependency in the data and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be modeled by some kind of multi-level modeling technique. So that's a very important result from this two-level basic analysis. And that's often something that people uh, want to know. They want to know, can I ignore this clustered structure or should I not ignore it? So should I pay attention to um, the clustered structure? And here the answer is definitely yes, absolutely. You need to take this into account. Same for the KFT variable. You can see the intra-class correlation coefficient is slightly lower, but also very substantial, still almost 0.4. So again, there's a large dependency. This cognitive ability score also showed great variation between the school classes. There were some where the performance was high and then others where it was not so high. And plus also outputs sample statistics for both the individual level and the group level. The individual level here is the within level. So this is to say the level of the individuals. And so for that, M plus gives you a covariance matrix here with the variances at the within level here on the diagonal and off diagonal, the within level covariance between math and KFT. And then also the correlation. You can see the correlation here at the within level is very substantial between those two variables, 0.662. It also provides the statistics for the between level. And you can see first are the means. The means are estimated at the between level, not at the within level. You can see here those are zero at the within level and they are given only for the between level. So those are the means for these two variables. And then the covariance matrix for the between level is given. So you can see here, this is the between variance for math, and this is the between variance for KFT. And it's very substantial when you compare it to the variances here at the within level. You can see that those are 
very substantial. And so that is that explains why the intra-class correlations were so high, because there's a lot of variance here at the between level, between groups. The correlation at the between level is also very high, so at the aggregate level, so to say, between math and KFT. And this is something that we often see when we look at between level correlations. So this is what you can get with this two-level basic option in M+. It's very useful to screen your cluster data, your multi-level data, look at the intra-class correlations, look at the within and between variance components. It's a very straightforward option. And then you can go from there and you can decide what you should do. Should you run a multi-level model or should you uh, find some other way to take that clustered structure into account so that you obtain proper statistical results. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also, please check out the description for additional resources, including videos and workshops, and I'll see you next week.